attending, um, feel free to introduce yourselves on chat, who you are, um, why you're interested. I've gotten some good responses uh, when people registered on why you were interested in attending the webinar. Most people um, said that they were very interested in learning more about IoT. So you'll learn more today uh, during this live talk. We had um, Andy Leak when he signed up for the webinar, Neuron, he said the reason why he was attending is because Neuron rocks, it's Neuron rocks. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's give it one more minute. Um, yeah, I can just go ahead and begin. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending this joint live talk slash webinar between Quanti and DPR Construction. Uh, Quanti is based in New York. We're a construction technology company. We do use Internet of Things, which we'll explain more today what that is all about. And we use IoT, Internet of Things, to improve safety and productivity on construction sites. Uh, we are on 50 projects right now. We're rapidly growing. Uh, we work with companies like Jacobs Engineering Group, Wallbridge, DPR Construction, uh, Mortensen, quickly expanding um, into the manufacturing verticals. Um, we just recently this week entered into a partnership with Wesco Distribution, um, who has recently merged with Annexter. So that's uh, focusing more on both construction and operations and maintenance. Um, in manufacturing construction, and we're also looking to get into mining as well. So there's a lot going on with Quant right now. And uh, just to give a brief introduction about DPR construction, who we do partner with, and um, we're rapidly expanding with them on a number of projects. DPR construction is a very innovative firm. Uh, they're, they're just celebrating their 30th birthday. Um, they are one of the top 100 companies to work for, so definitely check them out. And they have uh, wonderful employees like Encore. So how could you possibly not work or want to work there? Um, and yeah, so today we're having Encore Amin. He's an innovation leader from DPR Construction. He'll, I'll hand it over to him to introduce himself. And then Neuron Shretha, who's our CEO and co-founder at Quanti. Next slide, please. Yeah, thank you, Kelsey. Appreciate that. Um, I've uh, been with DPR now for about a year and a half. Uh, I spent about 18 years uh, working for Bechtel prior to that. So um, in this industry, in, in the practice of innovation, I'm an old gray beard. Um, but I, I like to think that I've, I've kind of seen a lot in that time. Uh, my background is in IT um, and uh, technology implementation. Um, I've worked in the areas of process improvement, um, information management, and then um, about four years ago, really got into this sort of innovation game as you, you've seen it today. Um, you see a couple of the reasons why I, uh, you know, have to go to work every day there on the right hand side. And uh, those are my, my two girls, uh, Luna and Rue. Um, DPR, as Kelsey mentioned, you know, 30 years, we uh, consider ourselves a technical builder. So we are in a number of markets. Um, you can go to the next slide if you don't mind me talking a little bit about what we do. So the markets where uh, we've been sort of focused on over the last uh, several years include advanced technology, which may include data centers, um, fabrication uh, plants, manufacturing plants, uh, commercial, which would be hotels, uh, corporate uh, buildings, as, as well as um, retail, Healthcare, of course, it's self-explanatory. Higher education, which is primarily university facilities, and then life sciences. Great. Thanks for the introduction, Ankur. Um, and uh, I'm Niran. I'm sure a lot of people know me already. So I'm the CEO and the co-founder of Quant AI. Um, my background is civil engineering and architecture. And um, as you can see in the map, I've worked in around uh, 11 countries around Asia, Africa, and in America. Um, before, um, so some of my experience, fun experience I had was when I was working with the UN in Ivory Coast, 
uh, as a project manager um, in their peacekeeping missions. So I was building uh, military camps as well as some of their infrastructures as well. And here I, you can see my team here at one of the project sites we were. Um, <clears throat> and uh, at Quant, basically we believe in improving the construction industry and contributing to that by solving the problem of safety and productivity, which based on my last 10, 11 years of experience in the industry basically tells me that that's one of the major problem we, we want to solve for. And, uh, you know, we're glad that we're working with DPR to, to, you know, solve some of their problems as well. So I can give it to Kelsey now for some of the, some of the questions, poll questions. Yeah. So, um, one of the first questions that I'm going to launch here, uh, so this, this live talk, this webinar is about the internet of things. Um, so whether you know, uh, currently what internet of things are, um, they are sensor technologies. They might be passively or actively collecting data and sending that data to the cloud. So on construction sites, my first question for you is what, kind of Internet of Things solutions has your company deployed to date? So does your company use cameras, um, any wearable technology, laser scanners, environmental sensors? Do they do any sort of asset tracking? So material tracking, um, equipment tracking, other. And if they don't use any of these things at all, or if you don't know, you could just go ahead and press other, select for other. Um, so we have a few people selecting for wearable technology. 20% um, of participants have selected for cameras and other. So cameras, wearable technology, and other. Um, not as many people selecting for laser scanners, environmental sensors, asset tracking, or equipment tracking. Okay, so I'll move to the next poll question. So that was based on what your company is currently doing. And uh, so my next question is, what kind of IoT solutions is your company looking to deploy? So they don't currently deploy it, um, but they're interested in potentially deploying it, at least exploring it, um, considering other solutions. So 100% of the participants are saying cameras. So it seems like cameras are the hot topic here. Um, and let's see if, so I have a more specific question for COVID-19 response. So um, one way that we're currently at Quante I using IoT technology and sensor technology, um, particularly with DPR and other companies, is we're actually addressing COVID-19. So we're doing contact tracing, proximity alerts, um, and obviously we're doing this as a wearable technology, a technology solution. Um, so on your site, are, on your sites, are you doing anything? Maybe your, your company is actually doing nothing at all to address COVID-19. Um, are they using tech solutions? Are they relying on self-reporting, temperature readings, or something else? So 50% of the respond respondents have said temperature readings, and 50% of the respondents have said tech solutions. So temperature readings and tech solutions um, seem to be the most uh, popular response for COVID-19. So with that, I will turn the board back over to Encore and um, Niran, and they can talk more about what IoT is, um, how it is being used in the construction industry, um, whether it be cameras or wearables. Um, we're particularly here focused on wearables here at Quante I. So I'll hand it back over to Niran. Thanks, Kelsey. Uh, and uh, so, I mean, so let's start with like, you know, I think where uh, me, uh, where our philosophy and some of the philosophy of what DPR is doing right now, where we find the best fit is because uh, we believe in making job sites more productive, uh, like predictable as like, you know, as shop floors. And that's same as what, you know, like what DPR is like, has been exploring using different technologies. So using sensors to uh, collect data from the field in real time about worker materials and equipments, 
and using that data to then you know make better predictions on on your productivity and safety, right? So that's the found, uh, fundamental principle of what Quant AI believes in. And fortunately, um, you know, at DPR, they share the same philosophy. Uncle, you want to talk a little bit about, about this one? Yeah, absolutely. So <clears throat> just like to point out that uh, here in construction, you know, we try to let everybody else kind of have a play at it before we jump in. And and frankly, that, that's actually worked for us, right? You pointed out that safety is a priority mm -hmm. and certainly we're trying not to deploy things that haven't been uh, tested, right? In an environment uh, like our dynamic environment. So one of the industries we look at for, for inspiration is manufacturing. And you can see over the years in terms of productivity and manufacturing, what has happened. You know, there's been quite a dramatic improvement over the last 30, 40 years um, and even in just in the last decade with uh, the use of uh, data from sensors, uh, AI to then uh, analyze that data, optimize, uh, optimizing processes, um, using that information, um, improving our, your, you know, the quality control in uh, a plant uh, with immediate feedback, you know, if there's some sort of a quality issue um, so that issue can be resolved. Just-in-time material has been around for a long time, but it's a lot easier to, to implement today, uh, given some of the real-time information we're getting from sensors. Um, and then anomaly detection, which comes into play in some industrial settings where you, know, you have um, high, highly flammable uh, matter flowing through a plant, you have uh, the risk of explosion and loss of life. So manufacturing has been able to do quite a bit here over the last 20 years, and so I think uh, to some degree, construction um, piggybacks on, on some of that, right? And we kind of look at how can we use what, what's happened in manufacturing to improve the, the safety, number one, uh, and productivity of our job site. Yeah. We can, we can get into some other use cases, I'm sure, later on, but that, that's some of the high-level stuff. Yeah. Just to – so is um, just-in-time just still a philosophy that DPR – that do you, are you using on specific projects, or how do you, like, in DPR do that right now? Yeah, I would say in general, you know, we have a lot of urban job sites that mm -hmm. frankly don't have a lot of lay down space. We don't have large mm -hmm. staging areas for materials. So mm -hmm. uh, we try to employ just in time a philosophy and approach uh, when we can, right? Particularly yeah. for those sites where we just really can't afford, you know, to, uh, to waste space or we just don't have it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we, we certainly, we certainly try to, to do as much of that as possible yeah. Um, and I think it's becoming easier as we, we find um, that we can use, you know, IoT. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. You know, to improve the quality of that information. Yeah. So um, at DPR right now, we haven't actually deployed um, the for material tracking, but uh, we are actually currently working on, on two things, which is the, the, it can come later on, but it, like uh, vehicles and equipment tracking on a, like, you know, your, your, your cranes and forklifts. That's what uh, we're currently right now working on it. And same integrating with the materials as well, where you will be able to see just the high value materials, like, you know, if they've been delivered. So that's something that, you know, we, we, I'm sure you've seen some of those things, things we were building, but yeah. Um, so yeah, at, at Quanti, like we believe that like, you know, like the, the foundations of our, our, construction industry is built by the men and women who work in it actually right and that's one of the things that i when i first met um you know like started working with uh, like dpr team uh it was all about like you know we're people first and we 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 strive for innovation and uh like both like the the crew the craft workers as well as like engineering team and the innovation team like you know there there was a lot of like um people could actually, there was a lot of collaboration that you were having, right? So that's the same thing, like, you know, and DPR kind of like embodies that, right, Dr. Yeah, I would say that, you know, you just looking even at the recent, uh, this recent chain of events in the world and, and um, that's affecting uh, all of our sites today. Mm -hmm. one, of the, one of the first things, you know, you, you think of is how are we going to protect our people Mm -hmm. who are working on these essential job sites now yeah. uh, from, you know, from infection, from, uh, and not even just infection itself, but from the fear of infection. Yeah. Um, so utilizing things like HammerTech, DPR has uh, 
uh, the partnership with HammerTech to standardize yeah. some of our safety practices across the board, including orientation and site uh, site familiarity. Um, the pre-screening app that we've developed that we, we use in all of our projects, all of those things are geared toward you know protecting our people and. And so when we think about IoT, that's just an extension of some of these existing practices. It makes us yeah. um, even a bit more confident, right? Um, and helps our workers um, stay, stay, stay safe and, and feel safe. Yeah, yeah, um, that's great. So yeah, same thing like, you know, so our goal is at Quantia is to build sensors that can help save lives. Um, like we have way number of, accidents in the industry then we should have we should be having um you know and uh, so so that everybody can go back home safe and now with the covid that has actually even increased right so uh we are we're actively working with like um, um more than thousand workers right now that are currently using our sensors for just like on the covid response cases for contract tracing um including you know a few hundred actually in tpr right um so um, and, and the, the IOT like basically has enabled us to like, you know, collect that data and, and make better predictions as well as take actionable insights actually, you know, and that's what we are here to talk about as well, because Ankur being the, like the, uh, uh, the IOT expert in TPR, you know, like we can, we you know, we can talk about our journey where, when we started working with DPR, like a year, uh, more than a year ago, you know, how, the product has evolved and how his contribution actually has led to some of these features that we currently actually sell to other customers as well. Um, so, yeah, so we can talk about the IoT a little bit, right? You know, like we see IoT devices everywhere, right? Like actually phone is also an IoT device, but that being such as like, you know, ubiquitous device, like, but you can see everybody's like you're using different things, right? From, um, you know, I'm sure you're using, um, some of these devices, all of these devices in your project, except expect the self-driving cars actually. <laughs> well, take the example of the phone, right? I don't think we knew what we could do with that uh, Correct. smartphone when, you know, let's say roughly 12, 12, 13, 14 years ago, it, it started yeah. to become more predominant. And, um, and that remains to be the case with, with a lot of the IOT use cases. And one of the things that uh, DPR's innovation program is built on is, uh, a piloting process that allows anybody in the company to say, Hey, I want to try that. Um, I'm looking for funding or not. Some of our projects are actually happy to support the innovation uh, coming right out of their, their budgets, you know, for the interest of, of bettering their, their performance. And so with quant, for instance, uh, you mentioned, we sort of uh, kind of kindled this thing about a year ago. We were looking at improving uh, safety performance with the SOS functionality, with the, you know the uh, the location sensing for evacuation purposes, for uh, exclusion zones, etc. Um, and then we looked at at uh, the same solution for productivity, as we you know we're looking for real time data to to match with our our TAC planning, our short term planning, um, and you know. The story is really not a not a fairy tale by any means, right? We we went off on a journey. We tried to push this out on a on a small scale on a project. Uh, we we lost uh, our champion to, you know, just a, a, a reorganization essentially, uh, and uh, we kind of had to put this on hold a little bit until we got uh, a good kick in the pants back in March, right, by Mother Nature. And, and honestly, we've opened more doors in terms of understanding and sharing that, you know, that, that possibility, that uh, um, value, potential value um, by employing, you know, by employing sensors to, as I mentioned before, keep people safe. But then we started to see what, the, what else we could do with that data. Right? And that's where the productivity kind of comes in. And you mentioned, you know, we've helped to um, evolve the platform, build out new new uh, new functionality as we saw what the value might be. And you know, I can certainly sit here and try to take credit for it, but that would just be a lie. We were on a couple of projects. We got feedback from project managers, um, uh, from superintendents, from folks who said, you know, I'd really like to see the data look like this because I'm not just interested in how many people I have 
on site. I'd like to see also, hey, are we crowding in any areas where <clears throat> maybe we need to be uh, concerned with with capacity or with, uh, with 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 essentially that just crowding of people uh, during this time when we're trying to, to maintain social distance. And so, uh, you know, thankfully, you know, our partners there at Quant were pretty quick to turn some of these things around. Um, the capacity detection is in place, and we do use that. Um, it's helped us to kind of stay ahead, not so much as uh, big big brothers, so to speak, but just to, just to protect our folks, right? And sometimes, yeah. you know, you get, you get in these environments and you kind of get complacent because, frankly, it's hot. You're trying to get a job done. And you start to kind of put some of the, the matters of safety in the, in the back of mind. Um, and so, you know, what we've been able to do is kind of help bring that, bring that stuff back to the front. Um, and the automation has really helped to kind of remind us in, in some cases that, hey, maybe we should be, be worried about making sure that, you know, our people are at a safe distance, working safely, and so they can continue going. Yeah, that's true. Um, so uh, before, you know, like you, you also talk about uh, like, what are the, what are the criteria for selection of a sensor or a hot, or IoT device on a field, right? Uh, because uh, construction is such a dynamic job site. And we've seen other companies that didn't like, we're not fulfilling the promise because of like f few things, you know, so you can talk a little bit more about like, a little bit more geek out about the IoT stuff, like what are the different options and what do sure. we currently use actually? Yeah, I'll, I'll be a little bit high level in general about this because it, frankly, it's easy to go down some of these wormholes and, and lose yeah. sight of the fact that we're just trying to solve some problems. So let's start yeah. with that, right? So what problem are we trying to solve is, is really the first thing you look at. So in some cases, the, the problem, when I say problem, I mean, what, uh, what insights are we trying to get? Get at. Yeah. Uh, if it's tracking material or tools, for instance, what's the frequency of the data that I need? Do I really need to know every 30 seconds where a tool is? Correct. Probably not. Maybe yeah. it's every hour, right? I need a data point to say, well, I've moved from the second floor to the fourth floor. Yeah. Um, and, it, and that brings me to precision. Do I care about where exactly is on that floor or is it good enough to know that it's on that floor or it's yeah. in a quadrant of that floor? But I don't really need millimeter accuracy here. Um, reliability is, is sort of talking to uh, what is kind of the, the critical criticality of that data. Do I absolutely need it? Is it going to you know, bring my job site to a screeching halt? If I don't have it. Um, you know, some environmental data may be of that you know, utmost importance in, say, the healthcare um, setting. So that's something to consider. Uh, what other information or what other data will, will this data point or this source um, need to integrate with? Maybe none, uh, but maybe you're trying to match up your environmental data with your occupancy data and trying to see how, uh, um, you know, the, the hospital room um, is with respect to, you know, it being occupied or not. Uh, and then stage, and when I say stage, I mean the stage of construction project. There are times where the construction site is a field of grass or dirt, and you don't really have a whole lot of places to, to put power or to put other infrastructure um, versus much later on in the job where you may have, may have everything you need to, to, to increase that density of, of sensors and, and um, make it much easier to deploy a solution. And then based on those sort of uh, considerations, you start getting into the, to these other areas where now you really want to geek it out. You can geek it out and we won't get that far into some of these things, but we can talk hey, about, I think the battery life and the long range part, sure. like, because yeah. Uh, one of the things yeah. I remember is that like, as you mentioned, right earlier, our resolution of the timestamp was really low. Actually, like, sorry, it was a little bit higher than what it was needed. Right. But for, for when it came down to like contact tracing, the resolution that it was a very high requirement. We need to bring down the resolution as less as possible, Perfect. and and then bring the uh, so that we can have a more accurate data, right? You know, because somebody gets infected, we don't want to quarantine the wrong person. Actually, you know, right. So that's what one of the changes that actually this 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 COVID response brought was. We actually made the data more granular right now, uh, you know, and and that that has been one of the things you know we worked with actually. Yeah, let's dig into that a little bit because I think one of the reasons we were attracted to, you know, to your platform to begin with was the relative ease of deployment as you have here, right? Uh, most 
well, only one component uh, requires uh, an external source of power mm -hmm. uh, and everything else is battery powered. So really getting a, a pretty good, you know, let's say minimum 12 months of battery life yeah. uh, out of your, out of your, your anchors, that is your, your quant sensors there yeah. um, and your badges, your tags really makes uh, the solution um, easier to deploy and frankly, an easier sell because now your maintenance load goes yeah. down. Your need to continuously service this thing goes down yeah. um, and you can move, move things around as, you, as your job changes. And so that of course dictated, um, well, how often am I going to be getting updates from your platform? Yeah. And as you mentioned, we kind of took that time resolution, which might've been every five minutes, every 10 minutes, whatever it was, and then narrowed it to something that was a little more useful for yeah. the sake of, of safety, right? Of contact yeah. tracing, of, of being able to sense that there is crowding in an area. I can't wait five minutes to get that alert, yeah. right? I don't want to know pretty much right now when that's happening, or I yeah, want to know exactly. when, you know, there's there's a person in an, ex in an exclusion zone, for instance, for that matter, um, pretty much when that happens as well. So yeah, case in point. Yeah, so that's that has led, led us to successfully deploy this in a couple of job sites in, in Texas, as well as in North Carolina, right? Um, and uh, so um, seems like most of these job sites are hospitality and uh, fortunately, like, you know, the, the, the new normal hasn't had a huge impact on this, I guess, because I think they're using the downturn as an opportunity to build more hotels so that we can go in, <laughs> right? Yeah, I think some of the some of the capital planning was was done to our uh, to our benefit, and so we're continuing to serve those customers and get you know get their uh, their facilities built. Um, and I think you know what we've done in in these cases that you have here is is start with our own sort of self performed teams. Yeah. Um, so we can you know kind of prove the case, prove the prove the concept, and, and show folks look. This is what we're doing. Yeah. This is how we're looking at it. This is what we're using it for. This isn't a case where I'm watching a dot move on a map by any means. It's more of a uh, a way to um, you know alert ourselves uh, you know to, to matters that require immediate attention in in the cases of crowding and uh, and um, in proximity. But uh, for the most part, it's it's a a way to cover ourselves when there is potential potential infection and we can go back and, and alert those who, uh, who yeah. need to be be informed. <clears throat> yeah. So let's just talk about, because I think, I think there's few people, like there's number of people in the attendee list that are not aware of what our hardware does. And it's probably easy to just explain to them, right? So there's three devices. I can go ahead and do this. And like one is the quant, that is a battery power device that you put up on the building walls. Uh, it, that These are the devices that do the algorithm to position the person in the right zones. And then in the wearables, we have the badges. So I do have a badge with me over here. You can see me, I have a badge here. We played around with different form factors. Like, you know, we, now we have these wearable bands actually that light up when there is two people coming within six feet proximity actually. So that's, we have a band as well. And then we have the hard hat that what we first started with uh, when we started, like we started deploying this and we realized that uh, uh, hard hats were good, but uh, in certain weather conditions, you know, um, not that good. So uh, in New York City, there are still people working in the interior construction without wearing a hard hat, unfortunately. <laughs> so the badges seem to be the best thing. And, um, and it has a button to call for help. It has an SOS button to call for help, as you can see here. And it also acts like a badge. So we have a system that actually you can print a badge label on this, so it will work as a badge. Uh, we also have integration with turnstiles, so you can actually use the same badge to open and close a turnstile, you know. Um, and then you need one gateway on a project. So, uh, so this one gateway can cover up to like 10, five to 10 stories of a building. If it goes beyond 10 stories, you know, like you're gonna have to Add a add a few add another one or like we did in another GPR job site we we actually added a longer one so this is an eight channel gateway uh, that has around like 300 feet range but we do have a larger ones that has like a longer range that we because the one of the DPR job site happened to be like that one is around like 25 to 30 stories actually right so we deployed a larger one so it's pretty minimal hardware 
and Ankur has the experience of actually like, because one of the questions we get is like, you know, uh, how many quants do you need? And then also like one of the things is like, okay, when in the building, in the beginning of the project, there is no, nothing to put the quants up on. Right. And so we just deployed on a project right now in the hospital parking area in Georgia, where uh, we put it up around a fence and then uh, do, we do have some fire extinguisher stands that we put it on, you know, and as the building progresses, well, we have, you know, we can, we need to add a couple of more on the, on the job sites, right? How is your experience with doing that on Kerr? Well, if we've had uh, to get creative in some cases, mm -hmm. but I think what allows you to uh, more easily deploy something like this uh, is the fact that, that it's all self-contained, right? Mm -hmm. You mentioned you've got the gateway, which is the component that requires power, but everything else that gives you that resolution, spatial resolution, spatial data, um, you know, doesn't. And so you have a lot of options for hanging things in places. And if it's a, if it's a site where you um, don't have a ton of, uh, let's say, Wi-Fi, for instance, uh, coverage, mm -hmm. not a problem really, right? You're providing that, mm -hmm. that sort of local area network with your gateway. So, yeah, you know just kind of going back to why IOT and how you kind of realize any value with it. Well, first you've got to go see what you can do with it. And I think that's the main thing. I think a lot of people kind of sit down and kind of um, try to storyboard the entire thing and go, okay, exactly how are we going to deploy this fully functional solution? And I think what we've done is, um, is really said, well, look, let's go solve this one problem using, you know, a pretty uh, simple means of gathering the data and then work our way towards some of the other ones. But um, you, you really can't get there without trying to do something. And I think that's, that's really why we, we like, um, you know, we, why you had so many sites there for us right there on the previous slide. How many, how many hotels do we have this thing on? Um, it's, it's just because midstream, particularly when we haven't really done any planning, you know, for a solution like this, where I don't have power in four different places on, uh, on a given floor. Um, and if I do, it's not going to be there tomorrow. Uh, I can still deploy a solution that allows me to get some of these insights and, and really just learn um, a little bit faster um, than I would if I, if I just kind of sat here and watched me on a webinar. Yeah, <laughs> we've had cases where some of the quants were actually lost in the job site where it was actually um, like somebody built a wall on top of that, right? But we recovered it eventually. It, you know, and that's <laughs> another point, right? You, you have some of this stuff and you have to be ready to, to be able to, 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 to part ways with it. The badges yeah. can walk away. Um, the, the quants can get buried inside of a wall. Um, and it just, you know, it comes with the territory, but, but it goes, kind of goes back to what's the information worth and you're yeah. willing to sort of be okay with that. And, as you go kind of forward, you, you start to see better ways to manage it from a process standpoint and more awareness of everybody around the job site as to what it is. Yeah. Uh, and I think one of the benefits yeah. there. Yeah. One of the thing is that like, because we are using a badge as a, you know, like they will, they might lose some of the badges, right? We've had cases where badges were lost actually, but because it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a nature of the like work that we do, you know, like we're going to get like, and, but, you've been able to easily like reassign them a new badge by just going to a platform. And that, that's one of the thing is that uh, it's easy to, you know, like kind of work with it. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. So let's talk about some of the things that we've been doing, right? I can, I, I'll, we'll go through some of the value for props that we've been you know, exploring and some of the things might, you know, are just, under pipeline that we haven't explored, but some of the things where we, you believe can, it can work and I can do a product demo as well, a little bit as well, right? Because I think people want to see that. So the COVID response, I think I can talk a little bit about that. There's two ways to do the COVID response in our system. Uh, one is by just doing um, this, this, fundamentally there's two th things, you know, one is knowing where the people are and getting an alert if more than the, the designated number of people are congregating in one zone actually, right? So that's one is a threshold capacity. And we also do uh, in, a, in a more structured job sites like, like data centers, we've also done like we put a lot, lot of quants and those quants are actually has been able to, um, you know, we're able to know where the people are and get an alert for that as well, you know? So one is a zone-based alerts and one is a capacity, uh, like um, one is the 
proximity alerts. And for proximity alerts, we do have a band-based solution where the van will vibrate if the two people come in close with each other, you know. So, um, Ankur, so in, your, in our case right now, we're currently using as a COVID and a safety response. It's mostly to do with the, um, it has mostly to do with the, uh, with the threshold alerts, right? That's what we've been doing actually, right? So if more than like, more people are like, you know, one zone. Yeah, so we, <clears throat> the, the, the threshold based uh, uh, capacity alerts, uh, you know, we've employed that to a, to a great degree. And some of that really, you know, comes into play um, in our vertical jobs So we have buck hoists, right? We have elevators mm -hmm. for the job sites and, and there's queuing around those elevators. We like to kind of understand, well, how much queuing is going on? And there are obviously productivity, you know, and logistics um, uh, benefits to, to capturing this data, but also in, in the case of COVID-19, where are we seeing crowding around our buck hoist? Where are we seeing crowding around, you know, any of our uh, entry points to the job site uh, when we're um, employing the, the screening process as we are yeah. uh, at, all, at all of our sites. So yeah, like the capacity alerts have really uh, helped us stay on top of that kind of uh, behavior yeah. that we're trying to prevent. Yeah. Um, and uh, so in terms of the uh, like post in incidents, like you can, we have a button that can like, you know, SOS button, which mostly has been mostly like, to be honest, has been just a lot of tests. Uh, fortunately, you know, like there hasn't been a lot of safety incidents in our job. So there's been a few, but not, you know, not fatal accidents. So, uh, but you know, some of the things we even prevented actually, right. But uh, the safety button could definitely be something that you can actually use it when it needed. I concur. It's a, it's a practical, nice to have, um, yeah. you know, our, our folks on our job sites are discouraged from using their cell phones. Mm -hmm. um, only, only a small percentage of them have radios. So it serves as a nice means for somebody who may be in a, in a secluded area or, or not near uh, folks who are with an earshot to send an alert, which then, um, you know, usually it's about a 10 second turnaround. Yeah. Uh, between the between the double click and the alert, uh, telling your your safety leader, your safety representative, um, where that alert came from and what badge ID yeah. it came from. Yeah. Um, it's, pr it's practical. Yeah. We um, so we do have a capability like we uh, to like do fault detections. You know, although not a, not a lot of customers actually need that, like automatic fault detection as well. But safety incident has been like the most. Uh, actively deployed solution right now. Um, and uh, as you mentioned, right, so it sends a safety alerts by like, it tells you where the incident came from, what time that happened. So a lot of for risk reason as well, like this can be used for proactive, like analysis of, okay, like, you know, okay, why was the person there? You know, those kind of information also we can gather actually. Um, and then for a very touchy topic here for resource monitoring actually, but you know, uh, we can talk about how does we anonymize and how do we value privacy in our project using, uh, you know, but um, yeah, we haven't deployed the community utilization, but that's something that we've been, you know, we want to use that eventually and supply chain and just then delivery. Right. Uh, but in our, this is one of the dashboard, like this is a, this is actually a mock-up dashboard for the DPR project, but you can see different colors of zones here where one like green will signify a productive zone uh, and yellow will signify like actively wor worked on zones and uh, red will be, you know, we can, this is a, this is a mock-up. So, you know, red will be like unsafe zones as well. So you can see like, okay, if people are gathering in unsafe zone or people are gathering the mustering area, actually, you know, so you can, you can kind of give different categories of zones so we can start understanding uh, how much time is actually spent on a, like a, you know, just waiting for materials to be delivered. So the person is now, can we, Change the location of the material actually, right? Um, so that's something that you know we we haven't fully done that yet, but I think that's something that we can actually, uh, you know, utilize to the extent that you know. So uh, and and also tying that with the schedule to see, okay, like you know, how how is our schedule versus schedule area of work versus our planned area of work that does does it match actually, right? 
Yeah, I think you touched on on the the utilization earlier, and I I think you know there's a there's a bit of this that sort of you said it's touchy. Mm -hmm. If you're able to share this information, it makes it a lot less touchy, and that's what we're we're sort of trying to do, right? Yeah. Uh, one of the things we worked on together was how do we enable you know our trade partners to to access the same information, particularly regarding their teams, their crews. Uh, I think that that's a, a really big jump. Um, in in promoting this for the use of of everyone on the job site, we just be more more safe and more productive. And if you yeah. can share that adequately, you start to uncover little things like, well, there's a lot of movement going on uh, between these floors. It doesn't really make a lot of sense because our work was planned on on you know let's say the eighth floor, mm -hmm. but there's so much movement going on between of the same personnel between that floor and, and somewhere much lower. Um, maybe we don't have our material, you know, stage optimally or our tools in the right places or our water is not in the right places or w whatever it might be. Yeah. Um, and, and at the end of the day, this, this kind of helps, helps everyone. So exactly. Um, as you mentioned though, you know, we have, we have uh, anonymized the names uh, within, you know, within the system using identifiers that, uh, that, that don't, uh, um, that don't uh, sort of reveal, right, the, the, the name of a person wearing that badge, but they do reveal maybe something about their trade, right? So you're able to go in and, and sort of draw some insight from that without having to know, well, who exactly is it? Because we're not sort of, like I said, watching on a map as we go. How can we better help these people, um, you know, with making our job site, you know, layout more, more optimal, um, for instance. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, um, so the other thing is, uh, where are we looking at this being utilized more is like, you know, where the future of this is could be uh, because DPR has, do you, do you have separate projects that are designated as prefabrication projects? We do. Yeah, absolutely. And does any of these hotels that we're working on happen to be like, has a part of prefabrication like sure. built in? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Uh, the, the project you mentioned in Charlotte mm -hmm. is using prefabricated components. Um, the project here in, uh, in, in Austin um, uh, is also using prefabricated exterior panels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I think, um, you know, that, that's a big, um, you know, where we can, uh, because if the sensors are there for like, you know, uh, location like location of the material becomes can be become really good right um, and then yeah extending the supply chain uh, so yes we 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 haven't fully incorporated BIM yet but you know there is a way that you can actually incorporate BIM into the system and uh, uh, and get the get the production data as well as visualization data out of it actually right so that's I think you know uh, we can we can touch into that I'll do a quick demo of that. So, and then production management, like, so we you know, we are looking at incorporating tech planning into this now where um, I know that's been our first try, like in, in, in first one in hot, one year ago, you know, but I think we're in a better position to do that where we can actually bring in different, uh, you know, planning aspects together actually, right? So that seemed like seamless workflow or architectural workflow, you know? So um, yeah, I think, um, do you think, you know, as we go along, right? Because that's the holy grail, like bringing in the schedule and production and those aspects into a single place where we can make better decisions, actually. Yeah, I mean, I think at the end of the day, when I mentioned sort of integration uh, as one consideration, mm -hmm. this is where, you know, when you start integrating that data, mm -hmm. um, with the data from the other parts of, of your sort of workflow or work streams. Um, that's when you can you know, really get to this sort of seamless workflow, right? Knowing where your equipment is, the availability of that equipment, the material, is it there in time? Mm -hmm. um, where is it? Uh, do you have the resources on site uh, to, to, you know, to adequately um, accomplish that scope of work? Yeah. Uh, you know, et cetera, right? Yeah, one of the big things that we are looking forward to actually, so we're doing some enterprise agreements right now and uh, you know, like where people are using across like 50 projects, you know, um, 
And in that case, uh, you can actually use the lessons learned or the data that you collected from a project A to project B. Um, and, you know, we can also do a cross industry, but because of the variance between like the, the lot of variances, that data is not actually applicable between different companies. Like some, like some like granular data is not as a, as a general, I think industry trends, you can still get that. But uh, like, you know, you can actually understand, okay, so in my project in like in North Carolina, like how long did it take for me to install this exterior panel versus how long did it take for me to do that in Austin? Right. You can compare these different scenarios and kind of come up with a really good analytics of, okay, like how, what's the difference is and how do we make it better actually you now? Right. So Naran, I want to interrupt. Uh, we do have a question um, mm -hmm. from the audience. So I just wanted to ask it while we're still on the topic. Mm -hmm. And um, Naveen in our audience, he asks, what is the accuracy of productivity data? Um, Naveen, like, I want to know a little bit more about, I can go to the, like, the product a little bit, and then I can show you some of the stuff as well. When he says productivity data, as in, um, so um, the, the, there's two kinds of, the first accuracy, I'm guessing everybody is interested is in the location accuracy, right? Um, so there is, it varies uh, be, based on your work environment, as well as the number of quants that we've installed. Um, you know, there's different variances. So I can, we can talk offline about the exact, you know, feet to meters uh, distancing, actually. Uh, in terms of the, um, in terms of the, um, the question about like production, production rate, right? Uh, the way we are actually tackling the, uh, the, the solving the problem of production is by understanding uh, like, you know, uh, are you in the right zone actually? Like, you know, and if you, if you know that and how much hour was spent on the right zone versus how much output was there in like producing or installing that wall panel or digging the foundation, you know, and that's how we do the correlationship between quantities of work done versus amount of work, uh, amount of hours spent. So as you can see here, right, you know, if you go into our application, so this is actually a mock project, just to let you know, you can click on that zone and then, and then basically what it pulls up is the, uh, the activities that are going on that, on that, um, in that, pro on that zone. So you can see here, you know, what is the activities going on in here? And then you can also see like, if you can, you can change the progress or you can say that, okay, I've installed, uh, you know, how much linear square feet of wall in here in this zone. And that basically gives you the quantities of work performed. And then you can get the hours of input from the sensors that are, you know, in this zone actually. So that's how we define productivity between like amount of work completed versus the amount of hours spent. So Ankur, so you want to like, so, you know, this is the, um, yeah, so we can, we can see the t activities in that zone. Uh, you can see who's, which, like, you know, which worker is actually working in that zone. Uh, you can see it broken down by company. Uh, so this is the filter by today. So you each call, each company represents a different company. So you can see here, uh, you know, how much, uh, so Gamma Electric, how much hours was spent here. Uh, and, uh, you know, so you can see basically was that supposed to be having a, are there so many people supposed to be in a single zone actually, right? And, and, and when the threshold increases, you would get an alert actually, right? And you can also create like safe and unsafe zones. So let's say that for a week, this, this happens to be an unsafe zone. So you just put a time here saying that you, you, you're, uh, you know, uh, and that now anybody enters that area, you can make a, make sure, like you can get an alert out of that actually. Um, so, that's on the, um, and this is, um, everybody likes to work around with this one. And then we have the um, time part where you can see, you know, uh, these are all anonymized data right now. You can see here uh, time in, time out of each person. And, and uh, well, if they had a safety alert, you would be able to see the safety alert as well. But uh, Ankur actually does a lot of, did, he actually exports his data out of our platform and actually he analyzes it on his own as well. Right, Ankur? A lot of, yeah, a lot I mean, of the, yeah. Yeah, I think particularly before, before the, the contact tracing was, was built to the degree it is now. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, we've been able to do mostly what we, we need to do within the platform. 
Um, there are some sorts of some potential integrations that that are probably out there, but we've been able to sort of do them manually by way of the export import process. Yeah, yeah. And I'd say I'd say to for, to just tack on to the accuracy question. It's look, it's 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 directly proportionate to uh, your 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 sensor density, right? How how many quants you have installed in a given area. Uh, that's a huge impact on, on that accuracy. And I think if you know anything about, you know, how this stuff works, um, it, it's sort of a give and take, you know, the more you sort of are willing to put out there and, and you know, spend, you know, spend some more money, uh, you get, you get a bit more, um, a bit more accuracy. And what we found is, you know, as we sort of, toggle that up and down or just kind of slide that up, uh, you know, out and, and back in, you sort of realize um, what do you need, uh, right? And, and, and what um, is going to give you the most bang for your buck? So I think we're still on that journey. We're still learning, um, you know, what, what is the information really worth to us? And a big yeah. part of that is, is the infrastructure required to get, to get that information. Yeah, so you can see here in this dashboard, you can see how much time was spent on each zone, right? By by day, by you know week, and you know analyze productivity data as in like, okay, are we spending more time in areas? Like you know these these reds signify the threshold alerts. So how many worker can actually be working in a single zone? So you can see that Southeast has like only five people allowed. So every time it exceeds five number five work person in the same zone, that basically sends out an alert. Uh, you can customize the alert to be turned off, you know, but basically gives you an idea of what's going on. And then you have a contact tracing dashboard where we will display all the close, close contact between the people so that if we need to quarantine, like, you know, uh, you can, you can just quarantine a few number of people's actually. Um, and, uh, and even in the worker data point, you know, you can actually see the, the worker between the uh, hours and the, uh, you know, is it what, how much time was spent on the productive hours versus like how much time was spent working for materials? Like you can see some of those information actually, right? And all that information is aggregated and displayed on a dashboard. Uh, and we'll, you will get an email out of this every night. Actually, you can customize that email when that goes out, but you can see like, you know, how many people are online, where are they working, which floor are they actively working on? Um, any high risk activities you want to see, you can see that. And like, you can create zones for high risk and then uh, you know, and safety alerts, um, and also social distancing alerts. So you can, this is a customizable dashboard. Kind of, I think we, you contributed to some of the ideas in the dashboard as well, actually, but um, this is the dashboard that people go into every day and see that, see their information, actually. So as you can see here, like, you know, 20 people are from Gamma Electric are actually working on the level two Southwest is the most active zone here, actually. So, you know, and even for evacuation, right? Like for evacuation alerts, like you can see put in mustering point where you can see, okay, are all my guys have gathered in mustering point yet actually? And you can, you can see how you could get a very quick visual cue to go maybe check something out. If you're, let's say your primary function is safety and you see that there are a lot of people working in a given zone, that might be where you, where you go take your eyeballs, right? And, and get a look at what's happening. Um, you know, the folks that sort of, you know, provided comment and say that I contributed, it was the team, right? The team on the job site that say, you know, it'd be really nice to have this, this information. It'd be really nice to see it this way. Yeah. I wanted to take a quick look at this. This is what it would look like. If I get that daily report, this is what insights I, I need. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the, the information is, is as good as, as how we use it. And, uh, and a good part of this is validation as well. I mean, I won't, I won't. Uh, I won't leave that part out. I, w I wouldn't leave that part out if, if I'm, I'm telling the, the story. You go out there and you make sure that where you think um, something or a badge is being registered is, is in fact where it is. And, and there's some tweaking that goes with that, and some just general understanding of uh, of how rough um, the information is. But as you kind of kind of get more experience with it, you realize, you know, how to make those tweaks, how to understand it a little bit better, and um, uh, how to adjust your, your system. Yeah. Um, that's a good point. I think um, the other thing was um, I wanted, so we've actually also incorporated these with like scheduling parts where you can actually like tie this up with schedule, right? 
uh, that's what you're trying to do right now. So we have a scheduling backend where you are able to do attack planning, you know. Um, so DPR is like looking forward to this in a, in a project in uh, the new project we're just starting right now, actually, you know, so where you can actually uh, allocate the number of workers that are in a zone and then and say like, you know, okay, are, are that number or more, are there less or are there more actually, right? Because if in attack planning for two week look ahead planning, you plan to have 16 guys working on East wing, but everybody's in the North wing, right? Then you're like, okay, what's going on, you know? And understanding that behavior right now, you know, and getting an alert is something that some of the other customers have requested for actually. And I, we're looking forward to like expanding on that feature actually, yeah. And for that, we do have integration with like Microsoft project as well as P6. So you can actually, uh, you know, have like a seamless data that can come from plan plan data, like from the from the schedule, and then actual data from the field. Actually, you know. So yes, I guess you know it's been pretty interesting, and like you know, we're also the integration part with BIM has been something that we can you know start working on. But this is the model that um, is this model is uh, is for the um, the project in uh, that we just completed, right, Ankur? Yeah. Savage? Yeah. Yeah, so that's the future that we look forward to is like, you know, incorporating the uh, incorporating the production quantities as well as incorporating the model into this so that, you know, this becomes a central hub for the information. So I guess we do have a few minutes, but any questions that we have, you know, I can answer them. Um, so we do have one question from the audience. Um, oops. We do have one question from the audience. Um, that person has asked, Andrew, uh, in our audience has asked, can we see a quick walkthrough mm -hmm. of how a user of this might use this information performing a contact trace? Yeah, so I'll show it to you. Um, so because of privacy reasons, like this is a webinar, I cannot actually display any contact tracing information from any live projects, but this is a demo project, right? As I mentioned earlier. So what you would have is you can actually go to each individual and see all his contacts that are actually, you know, that the primary, how much time he has been with that person you will be able to see that information here. And that information you can export as an Excel and like analyze it. And every time, every time the, the incident, the proximity be between two person increases by five minutes, you will get an alert or you, you, can, you can get a, it will be displayed on a dashboard actually. So it's a pretty uh, easy to, um, easy to like um, see where, okay, Gamma Electric had like, you know, 16 hours between him and the other person actually. Uh, I can I, I can show that to you actually over a on a like an in person demo, uh, if like you know because as a webinar I probably cannot disclose that information um, publicly for any live projects right now. Yeah, that's great. So um, yeah, we're wrapping up. We have about one minute left, and um, thank you for attending the webinar. So the majority of our attendees actually stayed on the webinar this whole time for the full hour. So that's great to see. Um, just a few things to look forward to. As I mentioned, we do have a partnership that we recently entered into with Wesco Distribution. So keep your eyes out for that announcement. Um, Neuron did go over some of our new upcoming feature sets. Um, we are working on equipment and asset tracking. So if that's something you're interested in, do reach out to our team, get in touch, and we'd love for you to be involved with that process. Um, and thank you, Encore, for participating in this webinar. Um, and Niran, do you have any last comments? No, I think, uh, thanks for joining everybody. Like hopefully we'll engage in some conversations, you know, in, in, uh, in, in a personal demo or, or, or email. And uh, looking forward to like, you know, making this industry better and um, working with folks like Ankur and DPR. Okay, thank you. Bye everybody. Thank you. Bye Ankur. Encore for president, someone says. Encore for president. Really? <laughs> <laughs> okay.